The year is 1995. If you send an overly large fragmented packet to a Windows system, you will cause it to a blue screen of death. No, wait, that's not right, is it? The year is 2015. If you send an overly large range header packet to a Microsoft IIS web server, you will cause it to blue screen of death. That's more like it. So this is a story that I read this morning on the register. So Microsoft issued this patch against IIS web servers, and unfortunately what someone did was reverse engineer what the patch was actually fixing, worked out what it was, and learnt how to exploit it. And it's a rather simple exploit. So what happens is the problem stems from HTTP.sys not safely handling the range header in a HTTP request. This mechanism is used to fetch part of a file from a web server, which is sometimes handy for resuming downloads. If you set the range way too high, it causes the Windows kernel to crash. <laughs> Spectacular! Well done, Microsoft! And here is a mechanism of checking your web server, or other people's web servers. No, no, your web server! <laughs> I didn't say anything about exploiting this. But the information from SANS is that people are actively <laughs> exploiting it already. So there's an IP address that's been hitting their honeypots. And the scans seem to be against causing a denial of service, because why not? It's probably for the fun of it. Even gives you the information now on how to cause a blue screen of death. So Johannes Ulrich, good bloke actually, he taught me one of my courses on the SANS. Anyway, he says there also appears to be an information disclosure vulnerability. Hmm, probably not a surprise really, if you're going to cause a buffer overflow, you might be able to extract some memory out of the web server. Might be all sorts of things on that block of memory you can get. Interesting. Now I believe there was an attack similar against Apache web servers some time ago, but the difference here against Apache web servers compared to IIS web servers is that Apache run as the user level. So if you manage to crash an Apache web server, the whole web server itself is still up and running. All that has to happen then is the Apache service has to be restarted, which probably only takes a few seconds or so, not particularly long. Compared to IIS web servers that are running at the kernel level, so it's rather more serious when an exploit actually does happen against an IIS web server, because in this case the kernel has to do something and it doesn't really know what to do, so it crashes. Well, that's just written off the whole web server at that point. You cause the web server to go down, and it, well, probably has to be fat-fingered on-off, doesn't it? Or do servers have some sort of mechanism for auto-restarting? Maybe they do. I, I don't know enough about that. But I'm sure if you do it enough times, don't you get that check whether you want to boot into safe mode from Microsoft right at the beginning of boot-up? So that could cause, like, a major denial of service here. If you do it enough times against the company, you could probably knock out all their web servers, do it on like Friday evening, they could be down until people come back in to work on Monday morning. <laughs> that could be quite funny. I mean, that's quite a serious problem there. Um, I mean, IIS web servers are not the majority on the internet, it's Apache web servers that are the majority. It's debatable whether who's winning or losing, who's actually gaining more web servers, but either way, there is actually a sizable amount of IIS web servers that are potentially exploitable if the administrators have not been particularly quick on patching. See, all you have to do is get on and apply your patches and you should be safe. So that is the news that it's possible to cause Microsoft IIS web servers to blue screen of death by sending an overly large range header packet. So thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.